Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to worship here at St. Paul Lutheran Church in this recorded YouTube service. We are so glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. and just want to remind you that this service on YouTube won't include any of our announcements or information about upcoming events, but if you would like to have that information, feel free to go to our website, stpaulwheaton.org, and you can find information about upcoming events on the website, or you can subscribe to our epistle to have that information sent to you each week. With that, we continue onward with our worship this morning. We're glad you're here. We continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share we question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life, which you have given us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we gather around God's word. Today's first reading is from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense 
for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who will might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. <coughs> God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Mark. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed out of the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests. In its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. O oh, great gardener of creation, you tend to your beloved world with care and grace as a sower tends the seeds that are sown. As the seeds of your word are planted in our hearts, may we tend them with equal care that we might continue to witness to and enact your reign being brought to fruition among us. May the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, O oh God our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. I will be the first to say that I did not inherit my grandpa's green thumb. These summer months of green and growth have reminded me that he had some truly great skill at bringing forth beautiful plants from the earth. Not only did he pay special attention to his yard and shrubberies during these warmer months through the work of mowing and trimming and watering, but he also grew a few small rose bushes to be able to trim them for my grandma. I remember fondly how he would not often, but sometimes lament how tedious the work of growing these roses was. Despite his best efforts to create an environment where these plants would thrive, there was always one element of his work that was beyond his control. My grandpa's worst enemy, rabbits. Even the fencing that was meant to keep those creatures out of that space where these plants were growing, those little buggers always seemed to wriggle their way past them and get to the sweet little buds of the roses thereby frustrating all of the hard work that my grandpa put in. All that to say, 
that the work of sowing, tending, and harvesting vegetation is quite the journey of hard work, hope, and faith. The work of tending plants is something that I envy in others. As someone who has difficulty keeping anything green alive, I look at my grandpa's work or my many friends who have so many green, so much greenery in their living spaces during quarantine. I wish I could better connect with their understanding and joy that comes with caring for these growing beings. To be clear, I'm not using this self-deprecating humor simply for the sake of a sermon illustration. I failed to keep plants from succulents to potted flowers alive and even did a poor job of caring for the unkillable office plant I inherited while on pastoral internship in Austin, Minnesota. And yet, here we are again with one of Jesus's parables that involves just the work that eludes me so. Lucky for me, and maybe for you too, Jesus doesn't say that the kingdom of God is actually a plant. No, no, Jesus uses this similar, this familiar phrase that the kingdom of God is like a plant. It's a metaphor. We don't have to go out and water the kingdom of God so that it might sprout forth in deep green hues all over. However, in these metaphors lie some important connections about how we might envision our work within the vineyard, farm, or garden, all metaphorical, of God's reign, especially in light of this season of pride and celebrations and our witness to God's abiding love. God's reign is full of mystery. Yes, it certainly does pop up where it's planted, what with the call of the church to be Christ's disciples in this and every age, and with the very wide range by which these seeds grow after, oh, the wide range by which these seeds of faith are planted all over the world. But the means by which these seeds grow after being plunged into the soil is rather unknown to us. In the same way that seeds are put into the earth with the trust that they will sprout and grow and bear fruit, so too are our lives of faith and the lives of faith of those all over the world are meant to sprout and grow despite the strangeness and mystery of what lies ahead. However, despite what our human nature might ask us to do in the face of mystery, This isn't so much an invitation for us to figure out every single nook and cranny of God's reign. No, Jesus's allusions to the mystery of seeds emerging from the earth is easily, is nearly an invitation for us to grow comfortable with the reality of mystery among us. That not every fact of the life of faith requires ultimate understanding. There are certainly aspects that we can fully understand and embrace. God's love for us is never ending. God's grace is abundant beyond measure. Pastor Anders can't grow a plant. Whereas there are some aspects of God's reign that we are not meant to fully grasp in our journeys on earth. There is no stopping God's reign. Its unboundedness is beyond compare and it cannot be controlled by the bounds of humanity that we might attempt to put in its way. The mustard seed that Jesus speaks of is the perfect plant to represent this idea. Not only does this seed start as an incredibly small seed that eventually grows into a plant that is exponentially larger than the seed itself, a marvel and mystery of creation, if I've ever seen one, the plant that sprouts forth from this seed is one that is incredibly difficult to control. Mustard seeds are notorious for going outside of the bounds that farmers set for them. And once these plants reach the countryside, it's game over. They're more, more than likely to go far beyond where they were initially intended to go. And it's this unboundedness that we are called to enact in the world. However, our work to do that must be tempered by the effectiveness of the metaphor that Jesus uses today. Mustard plants are great examples of how God's reign may spread all around us, even in ways we might not understand. And yet, we know that the historic church 
hasn't always done the work of spreading this good news in the most helpful ways. The work of evangelism that we are called to enact is not work that attempts to conquer the world for the sake of faith, but to welcome, to welcome in those who are seeking something more than their life as an island. The hospitality, love, and care we are called to bring into the world is the front line of this mustard plant and its tendrils that are reaching into the world. God's reign bears fruit for us, for our communities, and for the whole world. This last and most visible part of the life of this plant helps us remember that God's reign provides us sustenance in the midst of our journeys. Not only does this come about in a metaphorical sense in the ways that we encounter hope, peace, joy, and love in our daily living, but even specifically as we gather around a table where Christ's body and blood serve as sustenance for our journey of faith. God's great garden that spreads around us in so many ways invites us to reap this harvest that has been grown. Mindful that this harvest is abundant, never ending, and carries enough within it to feed all of creation. It's from these metaphors that lead us to mystery, unboundedness, and abundant fruit that we might turn and apply them to our lives of faith, especially in this season of celebrating our LGBTQIA siblings. For so long, the perspective and witness of our queer siblings has been stifled in harmful and painful ways to the point of our current welcome of their perspectives and ideas seeming as if they are a mystery to those who are not LGBTQIA+. And the work of church is to listen, understand, and yet recognize that the life of queer people will still be, in some ways, a mystery to those who are straight. The unboundedness of God's reign points us to the abundance of love that God carries for everyone, including the queer community. And just like the way in which God's unbounded love for others doesn't mean that God's unbounded love is any less for us, we as people of faith must be mindful not to hoard God's love and keep it locked away in ivory towers or whatever spaces we might attempt to accumulate it. It's meant to be spread widely, to be shared in love, all the while mindful of the ways the church has entered into these spaces to share messages that were contrary to this abundant love. The metaphor of the fruit of God's reign, well, That's an obvious connection here. Fruit, right? (laughs) Joking aside, this is a place that I'm most hopeful in dwelling. That the fruit being brought forth through the work of affirming ministry and the witness of our LGBTQIA plus leaders of all stripes might continue to help us better understand the whole of God's great community garden where plants of all varieties are able to grow and flourish in harmony. May we take up the task of being gardeners in this garden of God's reign, beloved. May we ponder the mystery. May we allow the church outside of its bounds. May we take up the work of harvest as fruit is born forth. And may we do it all celebrating the abundance we see in it all for the call to be part of this meaningful work. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. At this time, I invite you to share God's peace with those who you're watching with, or if you're by yourself, I invite you to think of those for whom you are sending peace to today. We continue our worship with our communion liturgy, starting with our offering prayer. If you would like to give an offering here at St. Paul, you can find links on our website to do so, or you can mail your donations to the church office. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of and again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember, remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wheels of all who, the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us in the words most comfortable to each. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we are invited to gather around this table where Jesus is both host and meal. If you have your communion elements with you, you can grab them now as I impart the words of communion. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now, as we go on our way today, receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Make a difference. Thanks be to God. <laughs>